Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Modern Masters and the financial impact of it. I've always been very supportive of reprints. I feel reprints are good for the game. It's good for the player base. And one of the reasons that I love Modern so much is it's no reprints bar. There's no reserve list. So by definition, if they wanted to print Tomogorf as the uncommon 18 million times, they could do that. So the Zendikar Fetch Lands got reprinted. I do own multiple playsets of each of the non-blue ones. I just never had a reason to own the blue ones. Uh, Cavern of Souls was reprinted, and I do own a page of that. As someone who has a larger collection, I fully support reprints, mainly for I want to play with people. When I bought these cards, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to hold them. Scavenging Ooze was an interesting reprint. And of course, Lilies, and as you will see later, a whole page, two pages of Snapcasters, I believe, in this particular binder. So, uh, and the Force of Wells, the Jace, the Mind Sculptors, there's very little in this binder that has not been reprinted if it's not on the reserve list. Overall, my gut feeling is you have to make it a player's game, and you have to tell people, hey, it's a player's game, don't hoard cards, don't collect cards, or if you do do that, do it because you enjoy it, not because you want to make money from it. And that's my personal feeling. If I collect Deathrite Shamans, it's because I like collecting the card, not necessarily because I want to make money from it. And that's the way Magic the Gathering should be moving on. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned about their collections and they're concerned about the value of Magic. And to, to that, you have to change your mindset. If you view Magic as an investment, you won't have fun. That's how I used to view it. I didn't have fun. If you view magic as a, um, some type of perpetual money-making machine, it is so hard to make money from magic, no matter what you do in magic. If you're a pro magic player, you're the best pro magic player, you barely make the same income as a bottom-level developer in Houston. A top-level developer, one of the developers that we've hired, he gets paid 160000 benefits, everything. I don't know any Magic player or anyone associated with Magic the Gathering who's not part of Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast who's making anywhere amount that type of money. Faker, who is the League of Legends champion, he makes about $2.2 million a year. He has sponsorships, he has appearance fees. The guy is legit, right? But that's League of Legends. We're talking about Magic the Gathering. If you make $60,000, doing Magic the Gathering, I think that's actually a respectable income because I don't know if I could ever do that. I don't have the skill set to make even $20,000 doing Magic the Gathering a year. So for the people who are making this money via Patreon, via being very good, being at Magic, more props to you because you, you have done something I could never ima even imagine I would do. So here we see a bunch of cryptic commands. And we see Burping Pod and Splinter Twin are in this binder, which uh, brings me back. This binder is a little bit old. And Princess Falia has uh, not been reprinted, so yay for that. Noble Hierarch doesn't have the reprint. Dot Seas doesn't have the Pass in Flames, really interesting reprint. I do have tons of those because they were at one time a very good speculation for most people. Uh, Demonic Tutors. Yeah, Demonic Tutors not getting a reprint. So, uh, Vraska's, but my voices got hit hard, my Abrupt Decays got hit really hard, my Fetch Lands got hit pretty hard, my Tomogorfs got hit, and we're going to scroll through pages of voices, got hit pretty hard, Geist has been reprinted in a dual deck, Scavenging Ooze has been reprinted again, so overall, my collection has probably lost around $3,000 of value just in this season, but I'm 100% okay with it, and I 100%... Oh, Fractus. Wow, I, I didn't even realize that Fractus in this binder. Okay, that's a, that's a card uh, that get, just got reprinted. I 100% support the reprints because I didn't get into magic to make money. I didn't get into magic to you know, sit on cards and then wait five years later and hope that they go up in price into my, little, in my binder. Honestly, like, I don't get much enjoyment from having a valuable binder. It gives me none, like very little to zero enjoyment. 
I get enjoyment when I play with my friends. I get enjoyment when I go to FNM, go to locals. Uh, that's when I enjoy magic. Reman has been reprinted too. So that's my personal feeling about it. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you feel something that's a little different. Again, I understand people are upset. They've lost money. They've lost value. They've lost supposed assets and investment vehicles. But if you play Magic just to have fun and you play Magic because you enjoy the game and you want to hang out with your friends who have played Magic, I've been playing Magic since elementary school. And I have a different set of friends, and each set of friends likes a different block because they we grew up in those blocks together. Then this is very awesome that you can go and you can play Modern Masters 2017 and play with some of the most epic, powerful cards during when I grew up. So overall, I'm very happy, and I don't have any complaints. They did a good job. Bye, guys.